Hello folks! Well, it seems as though we can really only go so far west in our march through the Midwest before we have to turn around and come back home to the east. But there are still plenty of adventures here in the Midwest. I've brought you all today to Indiana once again. I did hint at this during my Indiana Dunes National Park video, that we were eventually going to be coming through southern Indiana, and now here we are. Southern Indiana is quite a bit different from northern Indiana, although they're both in Indiana. Northern Indiana is very flat and full of fields. Now southern Indiana still has its fair share of fields and farmland, but it's a little bit more hilly, and it's a little bit more forested. As you can see here behind us is the mighty Wabash River. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Okay, now I remember. It's the Wabash River. So here, the Wabash River is one of Indiana's most important rivers. It flows all the way through central Indiana, and then flows down to make Indiana's east no, western boundary, and along with another river, the Ohio River, those two rivers merge and eventually flow into the mighty Mississippi River. And that is why if you take a look on the map of Indiana, you'll see that the northern part's boundaries, its borders are very linear, but on the bottom it's just all squiggly. And that's because the borders are natural borders, they are rivers. In addition to geography, the other thing that makes southern Indiana quite different from northern Indiana is its culture. Getting my first acquaintances with the locals here of Indiana as I rest my trailer at a campground, I noticed that the people really have these thick southern accents. Would you believe that for a state like Indiana? That in the south, they have southern accents? I'm not even too sure entirely why. What I do know though is, Southern Indiana was actually, contrary to what I originally thought in my life, Southern Indiana was the first part of Indiana explored and developed. And later on, Northern Indiana was developed. Oh wow, it's actually getting quite muddy. If I learned something from my experience in St. Louis, Missouri, don't step in the mud too deep. Don't go too close to the river. You could get your shoes really muddy. So I'm gonna walk away before I get into too much danger. But anyway, I wanna introduce you to where we are. Welcome to New Harmony, Indiana. This is gonna be a different video than most because this is a very, very small community. A very, very historical community as well, which I'll explain once we get deep into the town. I'll see you there. At first I thought this was just the joke sign, like, yeah, thank you, I know I'm in Indiana, but that's actually something to help drivers know that they're now in Indiana, because on the other side of that closed bridge, would-be drivers would be coming from Illinois. We are right on the border with the western part of Indiana and the eastern part of Illinois. Now, today, New Harmony, Indiana is a town like any other, but originally, before it became a town, it was its own isolated colony. The tale of New Harmony is an interesting tale about human nature, and, well, to be pessimistic, it's also about how, through their own doing, humans screw up their plans to achieve their goals. A little over 200 years ago, there was this community, a religious community, led by a guy named Johann Georg Rapp, R-A-P-P, Rapp. And 
this community believed that their Messiah, Jesus Christ, would make an appearance during their lifetimes. And so, to prepare for this so-called Second Coming, they moved to America and set up a religious colony. Not yet New Harmony, but their own religious colony. They believed that the key to life was perfection. They believed to attain that salvation they would need to live a sin-free life in every facet imaginable. Throughout the years, they practiced their religion separate from everybody else. They were their own separatist group. And, oh, that was a bell. Might be a church bell. I don't know. But yeah, they wanted to just live away from everybody else to have their own perfect society, this utopia, if you will, where everybody was morally upstanding and perfect in every way. Eventually, this guy, Rap, collects a bunch of money and buys quite a few acres right here in New Harmony, Indiana. That's right where we are walking right now. Originally stood a religious colony that was meant to be the perfect society separate from everywhere else in the world. Their little utopia right here in New Harmony. Because of that, the group was often called the Harmonist Society or Harmonists. Now, as you can tell, these structures are very, very old. They look like they date back to the time of the Harmonists. After all, they were a very self-sufficient community. They did everything on their own, from food cultivation to building. They had jobs and they cared for their own community, very much so. This was not the first nor the only Harmonist community in the United States at the time. This is just one of the more notable communities for its story, of course. But in every one of their communities, the Harmonists, they built what I'm about to show you. This is a labyrinth of shrubs. The Harmonists originally created this. Well, this is a reconstruction, obviously, it would not last to the present day, but the Harmonists grew these and turned it into a labyrinth. Let's go in this. Okay, I'm a bit lost already. What? Are these gates intentional? I only know the entrance. Is there an exit? So yeah, as I continue to get lost in this labyrinth, I'll explain exactly what this symbolized. So the Harmonists put this here to symbolize how difficult life was with its challenges and obstacles and the struggle that it was to achieve a perfect spiritual life, as they did want perfection in their spiritual life to be the goal. Like, no joke, I'm actually kind of lost. I do want to get to the center, though, somehow. All right, what do we have here? Knock, knock. Nobody is home. That's a shame. So you're telling me that I could have just cheated, opened the gate, and gotten to the center? I guess there's some parallels with the labyrinth and difficulty and challenges. I started over there. I took the long way around to get to there. And I could have taken the easy route. Does that mean anything for life? Or how I should interpret that for figurative meanings or something? Always taking the long route when I could just take the easy route? Well, that's the... that's the labyrinth. A few years go by and shortly after, that guy, Rap, receives a prophecy. And that prophecy basically is this ain't it, chief. You gotta start all over. Go someplace else. Abandon New Harmony. So that's exactly what the Harmonists did. They left New Harmony, Indiana and sold 
the few acres that they had to Robert Owen. He had another idea of a utopian area. Not so religious, though. He wanted more of this to be a social experiment. This guy wanted to see for himself if a community could be established where everybody works for the benefit of the collective, where everybody's profits would be taken and used for the good of this community. In essence, he wanted to be a socialist. This was socialism before Karl Marx even got to the scene. So forget about the Soviet Union. Right here in New Harmony, Indiana, some 200 years ago, was the true first socialist experiment. Everybody in this supposed community would finally get housing, education, would be able to feed themselves during a time when not everybody was fed, not everybody was housed, not everybody was paid equally or fairly is the better term. Now, does it count if the clock does not have any hands? A large group was shipped overseas and brought to this colony. Owen made sure that there were numerous efforts to give everybody a sense of equality. Eventually though, it did not work out. Humans are the ones who ruin their own plans sometimes. Conflicts developed. People had disputes over who was going to hold the money and share the money, who was going to work certain jobs, and personal conflicts developed. With all these conflicts, people started to slowly turn away from this grand utopian idea. People didn't feel any motivation or incentive to work anymore. Money ran short, food ran short, the colony was failing. The idea of this utopian community in New Harmony, Indiana, did not survive in both the iteration of the religious, faith-oriented version and the secular, idealistic version, too. But what did survive was the reputation of this town for its desire to learn the knowledge of the world and to express freedom of thought, and I would say a third colony now exists today, one of an artist's colony. Now we are here in what's known as the Roofless Church. This is a fairly modern thing. It didn't exist in the time of either the Harmonists or the Owenite colony, but it's a testament to how this town, this very small town, still lives on in the creative realm, in the artistic realm. One might think of the name Roofless Church and think, wait a minute, there's a roof right there. No. This whole open space is the church. It's actually quite a lovely design. The idea that a church doesn't have to be in this enclosed space, but can be outside and to express the beauty of the world and your close contact with the world instead of being cooped up in this small building of sorts. So I like this idea. Roofless church here in New Harmony, Indiana. It's a beautiful afternoon here in New Harmony. I guess we're overlooking, is that a field of some type of crop? There's a lot of farms here in Indiana, so this doesn't surprise me how there's one right next to this church. Or maybe it's just a garden. And from this space, it's a nice overlook. Plenty of seats for people to gaze at the beautiful nature. You know, utopia is such an interesting concept. The literal meaning of it means no place or not a place. Something that's un 
unobtainable. And so I think it's fitting that right here in New Harmony, there were two experiments trying to achieve that utopia, some special great place, and both experiments failed. So maybe utopia is not meant to be achieved. Maybe utopia is only attainable through our minds and our goals and ambitions. If you were in charge of establishing and conducting a society that was supposedly utopian, how would you do it? Would you make a religious colony based on faith and perfection? Would you become a proto-socialist and try to make equality for all? Or would you do it your own way? It's such an interesting thing to think about. I don't know if I could ever personally come up with a way to make a society that would be completely perfect in all aspects. But that's going to do it here in New Harmony, Indiana. I hope you all enjoyed that. I tried to deviate from all the cities and parks to bring you a little taste of some sort of forgotten American story right here in this small town. So, we are moving eastward back through another part of the Midwest and we have plenty more to explore. The journey is not over yet. So, with that being said, walking in front of this beautifully made roofless church here in New Harmony, Indiana. More travels to come. I will see you at the next location.